Yo. Hi, Rickerat. Welcome in. Can we get some yos? Hello. Hi, everybody. Guys, new tweet? New tweet. Go like it so everybody knows I'm live. I'm live late. <laughs> I'm almost like two hours late. Don't cancel me. I had to finish the graphics for today. Hi, Crystal. Welcome in. Can we get some yos? Hi, Crystal. I think you were like one of the first three people to fill out the quiz this year. You were on it. Teacher's pet. I'm finally on break. Pog. Dang. Does that mean you only get like a one week break? For our district, they get two. And they go back to school on Tuesday, because New Year's is on Monday this year. They get an extra day. You get two? Pog. You've been watching the YouTube videos because you can't watch the stream? That sucks, but also thank you for watching the YouTube. I mean, th that's the whole point of the highlights, right? Is so like, I know everybody's got school or work or just they don't like stream content, like long form. So that's why I'm like, I'm trying to put more time into editing. I promise all, I'm literally making a list. Like I'm going through my VOD channel to make a list of everything that needs to be edited. They, that way I can pick out of it, and then whenever I can afford an editor, they can just grind through the archive. You got two weeks off as well? Nice. <laughs> I just got out of school. Thank God I got out on time. Oh, <laughs> uh, you probably got a half day, yeah? I think half days are a scam. Like, I know if you're a parent, like, you gotta get out of work early to pick up your stupid little kid. And then also, me the student, I hate half days because then it feels like, why am I getting ready for school for only like three hours of learning? It seems kind of silly. Because due to staffing shortages like 10 years ago in our district, they had like, I think Wednesdays as late start or half days or something. So it was just like, what's the point of going to school on Wednesday? They're no longer doing half days next semester Okay. Is that good? <laughs> um, face came on in one minute, everybody. I had finals and a bunch of tests last week, so my brain stars are at an all-time low. Dude, mine are always low. High five. Okay, face cam on in three, two, one. I got a new coat. Look, it's like one of those faux fur. It's really big. It's a 2XL. I normally fit into like an XL, but this is a 2XL. $26 minus 26. But this is my Christmas present that I got for myself. I look like a little polar bear. I didn't have time to wash it, so I just sprayed it with alcohol. Hopefully there's no bugs. I checked it. 
but hello, good afternoon, good evening, hope everyone's doing- hope everyone is doing well today. We had Kobo- no, no, we did not have Kobo. Kobo was just usually here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we had Rickarat and Crystal, thank you for chatting in the just starting soon screen. Dude, I'm so dumb. I gotta drink my yogurt. Okay, I'm live a little late today. Because... I had to finish all the graphics for today. You know, I made a little slideshow. And then I did a little extra bit for today. I was going to... I'm not going to spill what it is, but I worked on it last night. And I had to finalize it this morning. I think you guys will like it. Okay, what's today? Today is December. I need to... Okay, my sister is sleeping. I forgot. Because... For her, for, for her first week of training, she's on swing shift, so she's literally, like, working all night, and she doesn't get home till like, 7. So she's sleeping, and I need to, like, I need to be quieter. Okay, I'll be honest, she sleeps like a log, though. Like, she can't hear me. I just, I just can't scream. Which, I'm trying to minimize how much I scream, because I don't want the neighbors to think I'm being killed. And even if I did scream, they wouldn't care. Okay. Today, YouTube. I will be editing this stream next year. Because I think the <laughs> the bit of editing the previous year's Naughty or Nice stream is going to work. So today, or a few weeks ago, I made my viewers a custom Google Doc quiz to see if they've been naughty or nice. This is our second year doing it. We did it last year. So we're going to be doing it again. We had 20 people fill it out and submit it. So thank you all who did and took the time to do so. So first, it consists of a multiple choice about morality. Have you been naughty or nice this year? So I have the results all compiled. We'll watch to the end to see how you guys did. I myself must take the quiz. I'm nervous. So there were a lot of similar questions as to last year. There are some new ones. Yeah, make sure to subscribe. Click subscribe. I need to, like... I don't verbally say subscribe in my videos because I think it's cringe. But if you guys watch YouTube on mobile, there's like there was a very subtle UI change to where, um... Like, the AI will, like, transcribe your video. Whenever it hears the word subscribe, it'll make the subscribe button, like, go rainbow. You know, pride. YouTube has gone woke. <laughs> I like how this looks on camera. It looks like, not holographic, but the color shifting. Okay. Let's get started. I must take, I want to lower my chair. I now will take the naughty or nice quiz. Am I naughty or nice? I almost clicked on the wrong scene. Okay. <laughs> so, the quiz is closed. You guys had two weeks to fill it out. If you missed it, L. Wait, L. Take the L. Follow my social media. That way you keep up to date with stuff, okay? Do it next year. Okay, the Nazi or Nice quiz. I'm only going to be doing the multiple choice section. For the initial doc, there was, like, bonus questions. But I'm only doing multiple choice for now. Hi, whoops! Welcome in. Can we get some yo's? Hello. Wolves got best clipper. Can anybody beat Wolves? Clip the stream, guys. We need more clips for December. Okay. I will take the Naughty or Nice quiz now. Do you think that you've been naughty or nice this year? I honestly... I tried my best to be really nice this year. I've had some people burn me, some people be kind of rude online, but I tried to be nice and wholesome and civil. I did not farm any real drama this year. Have you lied this year? 
Maybe. I think the maybe answer is so funny. <laughs> I, I lie sometimes. I like... I lie if I feel like if I tell the truth, it'll hurt the person's feelings like a little bit. I think little white lies are totally fine. You know, it's tight. If you need to cancel plans, do you tell the person you can't go in advance or wait till the last minute and flake? Hmm. Peace, I too. Hmm. Sorry, I had to fix the chat. Who hasn't lied, to be honest? For good reasons, though. I mean, I think it's obvious. Like, if you say you never lie, then you're lying. Like, everybody has lied at some point in their life. Like, I think it's instinctual for, like, 10-year-olds and under to lie. Yeah, like, when you do something bad, you lie. Did you break the vase? Um, no, I didn't. Okay, I'm gonna repeat. If you need to cancel plans, do you tell the person you can't go in advance or wait to the last minute and flake? Flaking is cringe, I agree. I've only flaked... Once. But that's because, like, I was gonna play Fortnite with my friend... But then, like, I had to turn in paperwork to an office, like, within two hours. So I was like, hey, yo, I gotta turn paperwork in. It was, like, an hour before we were supposed to play. And they were like, you know what, Peason? It's fine. Go do your thing. And I was like, thanks, man. And then when I got home, we played Fortnite. Otherwise, like, it's just, like, nice to tell people in advance. Because, like, you know, it takes people a little while to get ready. You don't want people to, like, be excited for whatever you're gonna do and then cancel. Like, it's just a jerk move to cancel last second. So I usually tell them in advance. In advance, I mean, like, at least a day ahead if I can't go. Obviously, like, if an emergency comes up, then, like, that's valid. But, like, if they're flaking on you all the time, L friend. L. Do you pre-rinse your dishes? Yeah. No, I, I legit don't think there's a time where I don't pre-rinse. I also, like, pre-wipe down the dishes. Like, if it has, if it's oily or greasy, I wipe it down with a paper towel. Because I'm the one in the house who has to wash the dishes. You know, my sister gives me chore money, so I wash the dishes. If I don't pre-rinse, I'm just screwing myself. Um. Moving on. <laughs> Pre-rinsing is too easy to not do. You know what that reminds me of? Look up weaponized incompetence. My roommate isn't home right now. He's at work. But his one job in the house is to take out the freaking trash. And he will, like, forget to take out the trash. And he, dead ass, can't put the trash liner in the, in the trash bin properly. He's 22. Man, am I right? Have you yelled at a service worker? No, I never have. I probably never will. I don't think there's ever been a circumstance in which I've had to yell in public. Like, there's been a few times where I've, like, almost been on the edge of, like, like yelling at someone who's almost hit me with a vehicle. But that's the only time. The only time that I will genuinely get mad is if, like, someone's in danger or, like, their safety's at risk. But, like, I, I would- I don't think I'd ever yell if I got angry. Because that's not helping. And if I had to yell at somebody, I would cry. And if I yelled at them, they would cry. And then we have to wipe each other's tears and, like, that's gross. So, no, I've never yelled at a service worker. Do you currently volunteer? Okay, this question, I worded very specifically, is either yes, I'd like to, but I'm too busy, or you have no desire to. I have the same take as last year, I have no desire to volunteer. My personal opinion is that a lot of labor that is associ associated with volunteer work should be paid labor, like people who work in shelters, people who work like at food banks that should be if you're working there you should be paid because those are like government funded agencies or charity run agencies like if you're there all day or if you're more if you're there for more than like three hours a day you should be paid to be there like 
And I feel like if the labor associated with the volunteer work was paid, then the general public would respect the occupation more. That, that's just my opinion. And I personally think that, you know, I've been exploited for so much of my life just working in food service and retail and the actual volunteer work that I did. Like, I was doing work that the paid employees were doing as, like, a minor. Like, I was doing a lot of work. So, I promised myself I'm not ever working for free ever again unless it's, like, a cause that is, like, genuinely good. I think the only time that volunteer work should be unpaid is if it's, like, a crisis emergency. Like, if you're looking for a missing person, or if there was, like, a, a weather disaster. Then that's whatever, because then you genuinely have to help your community. But if it's services that are offered all the time, it should be paid labor. Hi, Royalist. Welcome in! Can we get some yos? Hello. I don't know, that's my rant about volunteer work. That, that's just what I think. So I have to rearrange my windows. Okay. In public, do you listen to music and videos with headphones or earphones, or do you play it so everyone can hear? When I was younger, I didn't have headphones, so I had to listen to stuff on speaker, but now as an adult, like, I can buy headphones, I can buy earplugs. Not earplugs, earbuds. <laughs> I should buy some earplugs, honestly. The city's so loud. But... I have my nice, like, over-the-head Raycon everyday headphones, and they're genuinely so comfortable, and I've kind of realized over the past year, like, how sensitive I am to sound. I also have, like, really mild tinnitus throughout the day. Like, it's not crazy, but, like, I'll get ringing sometimes. So, having headphones, it just feels more comfortable. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever listened to music in public without headsets in a long time. We buy earplugs and blast the music? Uh-oh. Just be gentle with your eardrums, okay? You can't be breaking them that early. I regularly blast music in my headphones? Guys, seriously, don't do that. Do you want to be, like, deaf when you're, what, 30? Don't do it. I know you're emo, but just... Just be happy. Okay, the infamous shopping cart question. Do you put your shopping cart in the rack or leave it in the parking lot? I have a little story about this one. So I was doing my morning walk as usual. And there was a guy. Because there's like a grocery store like around the corner. We have a little grocery mart. So this guy, he was crossing the street. He was taking his stuff out of his shopping cart. Because like he took the shopping cart from the parking lot basically across the whole lot and he left his cart like not in the crosswalk but like right outside the crosswalk and i feel bad for the guy because you know he had like two laundry detergent jugs and like two bags of groceries so it was like valid if you're walking home valid but like the car was blocking like the corner so like it was kind of it would be a blind spot for pedestrians for like drivers turning so i was like you know I'll just put the cart back for him. I don't care. I'll get like an extra hundred steps in. Because the way I saw it, like, sometimes if I have the time, I will put extra carts back in the rack. Only if it's like blocking a parking spot or potentially traffic. Because that's a safety thing. And I understand, like, the people who push carts don't necessarily work all day. You know? But I, I get people are lazy, but. Just trying to put your cart back in the rack. It's just, it's basic human, like, decency. It's like one of those unwritten rules that you should just do. Um, so do you put your shopping cart back in the rack or leave it in the lot? I put it in the rack and then sometimes I put extras in the rack. Like, you know, if I want to be swole, I'll push, like, five carts and I'll feel, like, really cool. Do you hold the door open for others? Yeah. I legit- I don't think there's ever been a time where I didn't hold the door open. I legit can't think of a time. 
Because I know if somebody closes the door in my face, I get, like, really perturbed. Like, interactions like that would legitimately ruin my day, because, you know, depression. Like, I- if I don't see somebody hold the door open for me, then they're a jerk. And then I feel like I deserve to be treated that way, and then I get really sad. I think there is a difference if somebody is holding, like, the car door open for me. That really pisses me off. You know, I know it's like, ooh, treat a woman like a princess. But it's like, bitch, I can open my own freaking door. And then it's awkward because there's been a few times when I've been out with friends, like, both male and female have, like, opened the door for me. Which, I get you're being nice, I'm not, like, that disabled yet. But... <laughs> Because then it's awkward because they open the door and then I think they're going into that door so then I walk around and then they get mad at me because they're like, no bitch, I'm opening the door open for you. And then I, I get like annoyed. TLDR, don't open the door for me if it's a car. If it's a door like to go in a place, then yeah. But like don't hold the car door open for me. I'm not like 60. I'm not a boomer. Um, anyway. Do you double text? Parentheses, if they don't reply within 8 hours. I think this was a real... I had to really distinguish this part because I will very rarely double text because in my little brain, it's so broken. I think if somebody doesn't message or text me back, then they just like hate me. So if I just assume if I double text, that'll make them like more mad at me. Like my friend, <laughs> they didn't text me back for like a day and a half last week. And then I didn't reply back because I was like, oh, they're mad at me. They hate me. And then they texted me back like a day and a half later. They're like, oh, I thought you were ignoring me. And it's like, bruh. I just don't double text. The only time I double text is if I get worried that they're like not gonna get home. Like if they say, hey, I'm gonna go out to a party. And then they don't text me for eight hours. I'm like, hey, are you okay? You know, it's very rare that I double text. Okay, the only time that I will double text is if it's greater than 8 hours and if it's following up on like a project or an assignment. I think that's totally valid, you know? I double text a lot. Uh-oh. You need to stop. Or you'll get cancelled. I will cancel you if you double text too much. I just realized you can't really see my tree. Okay, back to work. Going back to texting. If somebody doesn't reply to you via text... Wait, reset. Going back to texting. If someone doesn't reply to your text, do you call them? Asterisk, this, this does not include emergency situations. If you call somebody when they don't text you back, you are... You need to change that behavior. I was editing last year's VOD, and I said the words crazy, insane, and psycho way too much. And I understand that those words are, like, considered ableist now, which I totally understand. It's just, I'm trying to phase it out of my vocab. Because, <laughs> like, when I was editing last year's VOD, I said, like, if you call them, you're psychotic, you're crazy, you're insane. And I kept on repeating it, I was like, oh my god. You need to calm down, peace and jeez. Uh, but yeah. I understand if you're, like, worried about your friend or if it's family, but, like, if they don't have the time to text you back, let it sit. Let them cook. But if you're, like, genuinely scared for their well-being, then you can call. But if you're, like, if you're getting, like, impatient, then that's not a valid reason to call somebody if they don't text you. If there is a jar of candy with one piece of candy left, do you offer it to the other person or do you take it first without asking? I ask. Mainly because if I take the candy first, I just look like I like really want the candy. Like I I'm a fat ass, you know? So I always ask first because, you know, I don't need more candy. <laughs> I don't need more. And then, I think this question is also related to, like, how people perceive you. If I ask, do you want it first, then the per the other person thinks that I'm being nice. 
But if I take the candy without asking first, then that person assumes that I'm rude. So this one is more about perception than like how you'd actually realistically conduct yourself. Ooh, this one was interesting. New question. How much do you tip service workers? Keep in mind, I live in America. I have a primary American viewer base. I, we have a few EU people. Now, it's standard to tip in America, which I don't think it should be standard. The only reason why it's standard to tip is before, you'd only have to tip, like, food service. Because depending on what state and what city you live in within the, within the United States, you can get a less hourly wage, but you have to report all your tips. But now, it's kind of standard for, like, every single worker within a restaurant to make the same baseline hourly rate. And then get tips on top of that. So I think that's kind of why people don't necessarily like tipping now. And also, most every single establishment will have a tip option. Like, I had to go... I got a new virtual mailbox. And he had, like, the little white square card reader. And there was a tip option on it. Like, I was paying to get documents certified. And it was asking for, like, a 10% tip. And it's like... Granted, the worker was really nice. He was really nice. He was the owner of the store. He was really nice. But it's like, I just paid $20 to certify documents and to open a mailbox. Like, I'm not gonna tip for that. Like, no. But... If there is an option to tip, I usually go cash because, you know, I don't want it to be taxed on. And my usual thing is I'll do $5 per worker. So if I'm going to like a sit-down place, I'll do like $5 per how many servers I had. And if it's like a digital tip, I try not to tip digitally. But if I feel like I need to, I usually do the middle recommended amount. Now, keep in mind, I'm a brokey. I don't have a lot of spending money. So if I, if I ever get to a point where... I can have spending money. Like, when I was working, I tipped the highest amount. Because, you know, I had money saved up. I could spend... I could tip $10. But, you know, as a brokey, I usually tip the middle. But if I had the means to tip, like, if I had a full-time job, I would tip the highest amount. You know, because theoretically, in my mind, the tip goes to the actual worker. Forcing someone to tip should be illegal. I agree with that. And I think the places where you see that the most is like sit-down restaurants where they're like, oh, here's a like a mandatory service fee. Or if you have a party larger than five, you have to tip 10%. Or they just call it a service fee. Don't call it a tip. Like there's a few like Korean barbecue or buffet places to where one time we went, they charged us like a flat $20 to accommodate for food waste. Even though me and my friends like, like ate like everything that we got served. They just charge everybody an extra 20 bucks. So it's like, just make that a service. We don't call it tipping. I don't know. Do you believe in karma? Yes, if I'm good, good will come back around. Kind of, I'm superstitious, but I don't let it hold me back from being rude sometimes. Or, nope, not at all. I have full control of my actions. I was raised to where my parents were like, you have to be good because people care about what you do, and if you act bad, people will assume you are bad. So, the way I was raised, it was more about perception rather than, like, actual morality. And it's come- it's taken a long time to realize that because I like to consider myself a good person. Like, I will go out of my way to do things sometimes. Like, I told you guys stories about random things I've done to, like, random strangers. But... As I've come to, like, break down my psyche, like, I don't know if I'm truly good. Because I have, like, they're not intrusive thoughts, but, like, whenever there's a situation to where, like, where it's, like, should I be selfless or should I be selfless? I will gravitate briefly towards selfish, but then I usually choose the selfless option. Because I would rather make someone's day than ruin it. Because I know I'm probably going to get to a point in my life where I'm going to want that kindness or want somebody to help me out in the way that I've helped people. So, and also, if you're nice to people, you're going to build more connections over time. 
And if you're just mean or rude all the time, nobody's gonna like you. Like, if something happens to you, people aren't gonna get behind you, you know? So, I don't think karma is like an auspicious, like, chance RNG thing. I think it's more so the people in your local community and the people you surround yourself dictate what happens to you. So, I don't necessarily believe in, like, a greater power controlling my circumstances, but I think the people you surround yourself greatly influence your outcomes. <laughs> I've had instant karma so many times, so I believe it. I guess that's kind of good, right? You know what else is kind of good? Following the channel. Because guys, we are 30 minutes in the stream, so if you're new here, click follow. You get cool emotes and you get to type in chat. Wow. Can we hit our daily goal of 5 followers? And if you're already following, make sure your notifications turned on. That way you don't miss a single stream. Okay, next. We're nearing the end. Have you ever donated to a charity or a GoFundMe campaign this year? Streamers and churches do not count. Streamers, because even though we're charity cases, it's still considered a business. And churches should be considered a business. Honestly, let's be honest, they do sell merch. And churches are for profit usually, like, they should not be considered non-profits anyway. I think I I donated to a few like charity campaigns like early in the year when I had a bit more money, and I I did donate to a GoFundMe. I think it was Cutie Lee's aunt. She needed help paying rent because she was getting chemo, so I, I gave her fifty bucks, and it was like the last fifty bucks I had in my checking account. So like I didn't have anything for two weeks, but I was like, you know. Because the circumstances were kind of similar to mine, to where they were trying to get government assistance, but they were in limbo, so I was like, you know, if my $50 can help her pay for food or rent for a month, then I'll do it. You know, I'll give up 50 bucks. I'll just mooch 50 bucks off my sister to buy me, like, groceries that month or something. Like, I'm very much the type of person to where, like, I will give up most anything if I think the other person needs it more. And more often than not, I do think the other person needs it more. Because going back to the karma thing, I, I just genuinely hope when I'm at my lowest, people will pick me up, you know? So yes, I have donated. I think I've donated about $100, like $50 to the GoFundMe, and then probably just like throughout the year to like different charity campaigns, about 50 so. But if I ever get Richie Rich, I don't think... Wait, no, I should not say that. If I ever get Richie Rich... I would want to start my own nonprofit. I would want to donate to like local community organizations because I'd want to see the people that I'm surrounded with do better. Good. Like I moved to a larger city this year and there's so much like visible struggle that I see and it's very sad. So if I ever get Richie Rich, I would work on local establishing local ordinances and stuff. Have you helped an elderly person cross the street this year? No. Mainly because I would probably not be helpful. <laughs> like, I'm not too strong anymore. And also, like, I'm really slow at crossing the street as well. Like, I might need a cane in two years or something. So, I'm gonna be the elderly person in two years. And I think, I obviously have a different perspective this year, and I know what I can and cannot do. Like, if you see people out in public, like, if you see somebody who has a walking aid, and you see them doing things on their own, at most, hold the door open for them. Because that's what you would do for everybody else. Unless they ask for help, don't give help, because... If you see somebody out and about, that takes a lot of courage, because just in general, um, disabled people and the elderly are somewhat ostracized, right? And it's also a pride thing, because when you have your capabilities lessen over the years, or suddenly, 
you kind of want to hang on to what you can or could do. So unless you see somebody genuinely struggling or doing something that they could harm themselves, then help. If not, let them be. You know, let them have that sense of independence. There's one more thing I wanted to say, but I forgot. No me recuerdo. Recuerdo? Recuerdo. Oh, my glasses are so dirty. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, what was, there was one more thing I wanted to say for that one. Oh, okay. Guys, when you have a chance, look up ugly laws. I didn't know this. Up until the 1970s, so during... So right after the time of desegregation... There were laws and like local city ordinances that banned disabled people from being in public. It was legislation targeted against like people who would like sit on the street and beg for money. But then they just made it basically illegal for any disabled person to be in public, like in public spaces. So like in shops, stores, in parks, on the sidewalks. And so because of that, look, look it up when you have time. So because of that, People didn't see, like the general general public didn't see individuals who were disabled people in wheelchairs or who had canes. And then it was also harder for disabled people to get jobs because of that. So, I was looking at stats, and apparently like, 40% of the homeless or unhoused population across the whole country is disabled. And like, if you think about it, those laws ended in the 70s so it's barely been 50 years barely one generation in which disabled people could get a job garnish wealth and then have generational wealth so that is my assumption as to one of the main factors as to why majority of the homeless population is disabled and it's very unfortunate that that's reality and it will take more decades to mend that harm that was done years ago <laughs> Damn, I could have been illegal. Dude, me too. It, it was called unsightly laws or ugly laws, I think. Look it up. I, like, I wasn't aware of it, but I didn't look at the details until like last week. And it made me like have a breakdown. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. Okay, anyway, final two questions. Do you smile if you make eye contact with a stranger? Okay, it says I pre-answered it, but this was because I was testing the quiz. Um, I, I smile every time because just sexism. I get scared for the one time I don't smile. It's going to be some man being like, why aren't you smiling, bitch? And then he like punches me in the face or something. Like, you know, just like, just like the daily life of a girly. You never know who's going to be crazy. So I usually smile every time. When I am in public, though, I do wear a mask. The only time I don't wear a mask is if I'm on my walk because I'm not interacting with the people. I'm just like in the forest so if i'm wearing the mask i still smile because you know i got very prominent smile lines like my eye shape you can easily tell when i'm smiling there was i told this story before on stream but i was at the bus station with my sister and my sister's on the spectrum okay for a bit of context and there was this old man, he was looking like he was coming back from church because he had like the garb on. Or <laughs> not the garb, he had like a little um, embroidery patch on his jacket. And he walked past us. I had headphones on so I couldn't hear anything. So I smiled. My sister did not smile. So the guy stops walking and he gets closer to my sister and he starts talking to her. And I take my headphone off and I smile. I'm like, hey, what's going on? And he's like, oh, nothing, and he walks away. So I'm like, hey, sister, what was that? And she was like, he asked me why I didn't smile at him. And I was like, okay. And then he was, and then I said, I told the man I was autistic. I just don't feel the need to smile. And then the man said to me, my sister, he's like, well, you should still smile, honey. God loves you. And then he touched her, like, shoulder. That was the part I didn't mention earlier. He touched her shoulder. That's when I took my headphone. I was like, why the fuck is he touching her? Anyway. It was just weird. 
like, we don't tell... Okay, I don't tell people in public to smile, because that's just weird. I don't know. It goes back to the theme of, like, pleasing others, and then people feeling in entitled to that. Like, I feel like times are changing, but, you know, some of the boomers need to catch up. Okay. Side tangent over. <laughs> Final question. After answering all of the above questions, do you still think you've been naughty or nice this year? I still think I've been nice. I still think I've been nice. Wait, looking through. Where, where, where was I bad? Okay, I didn't help an elderly person. L. Okay, I'll take the L. Okay, I'll be honest, the quiz is biased. Like, I made the quiz. You know, I made this. So I kind of have, like, my ideal morality, and it's kind of interesting to see how you guys answered it. Talking about you guys, let's reveal how you guys performed on this year's Naughty or Nice quiz. <laughs> and even touching a stranger is creepy. Dude, you know how many people in public... Like, you know how you see people on, like, a street corner, like, passing out Bibles and shit? You know how many of those fuckers touch you? They'll, like, touch your shoulder or touch your arm. And they're like, God loves you. And it's like, don't... It's like, little bro, what are you doing? I don't know. There's just, like, a lot of perversion in the church as well. So I just don't touch it. Or people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. Okay, let me... I need to change the color. Look at this! It won't go away! Now it's red. Okay, now... Now it is time to go over your guys' result for the Naughty or Nice Quiz 2023. Let's see how you guys did. Okay, I want to move my tree or my camera. Why is it so yellow? I would do like manual white balance for my camera, but that's too much. Okay, now we can actually see the tree. Okay, are you ready? Type one. So this will go over all the answers that- or no. <laughs> I'll be going over all the questions that I answered, and there was a few bonus questions just related to holidays and Christmas that I included in the quiz as well, that'll be included at the very end. So watch till the end, everybody. Okay, there's a lot of slides. First off, the first question of the day. Do you think that you've been naughty or nice this year? This was the first question on the quiz. Oh wait, before I get started, I forgot. We had 20 people submit answers for this year's naughty or nice quiz. Thank you to everybody who participated. 20 is a lot. Less than last year, but still a lot. So thank you everybody. I also like how we got like a even 10 number. That way like the percentages are a lot easier to calculate. So thank you. Let's get started. Question number one. Do you think that you have been naughty or nice this year? 80% said nice. 20% said naughty. So four of you guys thought you were evil. What are you going to do to redeem yourself? I better see lower numbers next year. I only want wholesome viewers. Next. Have you lied this year? 
I still think the best answer is maybe Peace I Too Smile. It's so good. I was gonna put maybe, but you know, I didn't want to lie. Surprisingly, nobody this year put never. Nobody never lied this year. You guys have gotten honest, and that is growth. We love that. <laughs> Hi, Kimari. Welcome in. Can we get some yo's? Hello. And I, I did fall into the majority. I sometimes lie. But, like, f for lying, I have to lie to, like, protect my privacy. So it's, like, I, I literally have to. Like, I can't be leaking. If you need to cancel plans, do you tell the person you can't go in advance, or do you wait till the last second and flake? Surprisingly, a quarter of you guys would flake. Five of you guys need to fix your behavior. If you're a flake, I don't think we can be friends. I know we'll never be friends, you know, I don't like parasocial relationships, but if you're gonna flake... Wait, half of you guys don't watch every stream. So you guys technically flake on me every day. Man, you guys are evil. I agree, some of you guys are evil. Type one if you're a flake. Reveal yourself. Next, do you pre-rinse your dishes? I was surprised by how many of you do not pre-rinse. I feel like that's standard. It's like, did your parents not yell at you when you were younger? Granted, some of you guys are still young, but it's like, come on. You're gonna get to a point where, like, you're living on your own. Like, you need to learn how to make yourself, you're, like... You're gonna come to a point in your life where you're living on your own. So, like, you have to learn the little habits to make it easier for yourself. Start pre-rinsing your dishes. It doesn't matter if you're killing the earth with how much water you use. You just, you just need to, okay? Have you ever yelled at a service worker? Surprisingly, not a lot. Only one person has yelled at a service worker. That's pretty good. 95% no, only one person yes. That's a pretty good... <laughs> only having one outlier is crazy. I love that for us. <laughs> it might have been me. You're a new viewer. You gotta be in your best behavior, okay? I was surprised, because, like, for some of the questions, I put, like, joking answers, you know, like, maybe peace I too smile, and then the yes, I'm proud of it. If you're proud of being a dick in public, um, don't. Do better. No, like, don't, period, do better. Like, not don't do better, like, don't, period, and then be better. English. Do you currently volunteer? I was very surprised at this answer because I know we have a few like people in school and then in college. Isn't it required for some of y'all to be volunteering and shit? Like, how does nobody volunteer? <laughs> but I is think I is I do think it is nice that a majority of you do want to or not a majority a minority. I was looking at the wrong color. Thirty five percent want to but they're too busy which i think is good but you know you can make the time like if you genuinely want to do something make the time for it and if you can't make the time then i don't think you want to do it and that can be applied to like anything like your passion your hobbies your clubs your work your family time and friend time like if you genuinely want to do something you can make the time I say that I volunteer, but they don't have to know. <laughs> oh my god. I remember when I was in high school, it was required to take 20 years, or not 20, <laughs> 20 years. In order to graduate high school, they required 20 hours of volunteer work, and the district had like an approved list of organizations that you could volunteer at. 
So it's not like you could volunteer at your church and it could count. Like, you had to choose from a list of, like, 50 different places. And they did, not, they did not have any animal shelters because they did not want to get sued for kids getting their hands bitten off. Apparently, banned football games and performances count as community service. Maybe in your district, but that didn't count for ours. Like... And honestly, if you're claiming that for community service... L. Do, like, actual work, bozo. In public, do you listen to music with headphones on? Or play it so everybody can hear? 10% of you said without headphones? Which I think one of them was Kobobo, because I think only recently they got headphones. That is canon lore. <laughs> but, like... Every li okay, genuinely, every little zoomer I see in public has headphones on. Literally, all they all have their little AirPods in. Like, I have yet to meet a person who doesn't own headphones. The only time I've seen people, like, play stuff on speaker is people on the bus. And they're usually just watching, like, news or something. Or they're, like, FaceTiming on the bus. And it's really awkward, because, you know, I don't want to be seen. Do you put your shopping cart in the rack or leave it in the parking lot? This one was very interesting to me. Because the majority of you are good. You put it back in the proper place, you put it back in the rack. 15% said you purposely put it in an empty parking lot spot. Why would you do that? That's a safety hazard. If there's an emergency, you could hurt someone. Stop doing that. I know it's teehee funny, but it's not funny when somebody gets hurt. Stop doing that. Now, I'm gonna give you coal, personally. Do you hold the door open for others? The majority said yes, 20% said no. This question, I purposely put like a really snarky response for no. I put no, I love slamming the door in their face. I did that on purpose to see who wants to like be funny. Which I can definitely see like a door slamming in somebody's face being like slapstick comedy. So I guess that kind of works, but I think that just means that wait. I think it could be, like, some people in public, like, act rude because, like, they want to start a fight. Like, you can tell when that's someone's vibe, right? So I feel like one who wants the door to slam into other people's faces wants to happen to them. That way they can start a fight. Do you agree? Type 1. Do you double text? I am so disappointed in you guys. Majority, yes. That's so bad. You guys gotta get off your cell phones. Go touch grass. Stop double texting your friends or your crush. Just stop. Like, you, you don't need to be talking to somebody that much. I remember the days of the telegram. Uh, okay, I don't. I'm kidding. I'm not that old. But just don't double text. You don't need to. They'll get back to you when they want to talk to you. <laughs> Did we get a higher double text rate than this year or than last year? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. The video from last year's quiz is on my YouTube channel. Go subscribe. The video is from two weeks ago, I think. Damn, majority said yes. That's so bad. Another thing I want to bring about- Another thing I want to bring up about texting is that it's not normal to have access to people at any given point of the day. Like, you know when you go to work, you're there from 9 to 5 and then you're done. But when you're able to, like, call or text somebody all the time, I feel like it kind of minimizes your ability to create healthy boundaries with the people. Like, I've had to express to my friends, I'm like, don't text me past 9pm because, you know, I have to sleep. I will answer it in the morning. So I think it's a similar concept to double texting. Like you kind of expect the other person's attention when you really shouldn't. 
You double text because of Discord? Okay, Discord mobile is so dumb. I- okay, that is valid. Because I'm so used to the enter button being, like, a space. But on Discord mobile, when you press enter, it sends the message. So sometimes what I'll do is if I accidentally press enter, I'll click on the message and then edit it to make my message that I sent longer. And also to gaslight them, because it tells you when you edit a text on Discord. Next question! If someone doesn't reply to your text, do you call them? Now, I very rarely do this. The only time I will do this is if I'm genuinely concerned about, like, where they are. But 20% of you said you do, and 20% is too high a percentage. Y'all need to calm down. Wait, does that mean... Okay, so that means hypothetically, a third of the people who double text will call after. Oh my god, do you really need to spill the tea that bad? Jesus Christ, like, come on. Y'all. Y'all best be on an unlimited text and unlimited phone plan, because some of y'all are just spamming. Oh wait, this is the wrong one. <laughs> I was wondering where that slide went. God damn it. <laughs> if there is a drop of candy and there's one piece left, do you offer it to the other person or take it without asking? I was surprised by this one. 40% said they would take it first. 60% said they would ask. You know what, I think, because I was talking about, earlier I was saying this is related to like selfishness and then selflessness. But I also think this could be related to just personal pride and like having the ability to take action. Like I think the 40% who will take it first are alphas, they're chads. They will assert dominance. They don't care about what other people think. They don't care if everybody else thinks they're rude. You know, they want to get what they want when they want. How much do you tip service workers? Now keep in mind, I have a good handful of EU viewers. Majority, 40% said middle. Going with the crowd, I see. 35% said the lowest recommended amount. Should I expose them so they get cancelled? 15% said the highest recommended amount. Y'all are rich. And 10% said nothing. I better hope those two people are EU frogs. If you're in the States and you don't tip, you deserve to be jailed. Or maybe you've just never worked a job in your life that thinks... I think everybody should tip knowing how the wage disparity is and the cost of living because then if everybody tipped everybody would have more money Okay, you know how they have the square card readers and it has like the pre-suggested tip of like 5, 10, and 15%? If you're clicking the lowest tip, the, the person in the register can see that. Like, they're gonna hate you, they're gonna judge you. Do better. You know who else can do better? The non-subs. Because guys, we are in our end of stream, so it's time for me to run some ads. You can avoid that ad by subscribing for $4.99, just $5. Skip your coffee and get ad-free viewing all month long. Or you can link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe, see if you have a Prime sub available. Also, if you are a new Tier 1 subscriber, or if you're not a sub and you want a Tier 1, or if you want to renew your subscription until the end of December, all new Tier 1s and resubs are up to 25% off. So today is the day to subscribe.
Do it. <clears throat> Thank you for redeeming Royalist. Back to it. Do you believe in karma? I was genuinely really surprised with the answers on this one. 45% said yes. They believe in karma. Which... I don't think a lot of young people are superstitious, but I think they answered yes in the sense of how I think about karma, where it's just, if you do good, people will be good back. Not in the sense of, like, some greater power or circumstance making things happen better for you. 40% said kind of believe in karma, and 15% said no, they don't believe in karma at all. <clears throat> I think you're either clueless if you think you have full control of your circumstances. Like, I, I do think you have full control of your actions, but you never know how other people will respond. So I think it's clueless and, and careless to act selfishly all the time. I'm not saying that you should be nice, like, every single moment of your life, because it takes a lot of energy and time to be kind. And also a lot of maturity and understand that not everybody has that developed yet and that's fine but you should still conduct yourself in a way that will lead to good connections later in life because you never know who's gonna come back and haunt you especially when we have so much weapons in america anyway have you donated to charity or gofundme this year 90% said no. <laughs> Are we all just brokies? Or do we not believe in charity? <laughs> Jeez, 90%. Y'all are just hoarding your money like Uncle Scrooge. What is nice, because usually whenever I go to Planned Parenthood to get my BC, my birth control renewed, they have, like, a little graphic or a little poster on the counter that says, like, what your actual donation numerically will buy. So it'll say, like, different amounts of donations will buy different types of contraceptions. So I think that's really good. Because I think a big reason why people don't donate to any charity fund is that you don't necessarily truly know how the funds will be used. Like, you don't know if funds will be used to... Like, pay for staff, to actually pay for goods that they say they will. Like, I think there needs to be a lot more transparency that's publicly accessible. With how money is used by nonprofits. I haven't donated money, but I donated furniture. That's also good. Donating things for second hand, not putting them into landfills, is great. Good job. I just wish it was cheaper to donate certain things. Like, in my hometown, they used to have a mattress recycling place where you could pay $5 and they would recycle your mattress. Like, they would take all the stuffing and, like, repurpose the metal. But then that facility closed down a few years ago, and they had one here in the new city I live in, but then they also closed it, like, last year. So the only way to dispose of a mattress now is to drive like an hour away to the closest recycling plant or pay $50 to the city to landfill it. So, there needs to be more time and effort put into organizations that will result in conservation. Have you helped an elderly person cross the street? I was honestly expecting 100% no, because this is like the most cliche nice person thing you can do. You know, nice guys finish last, I help the old man cross the street so I can get a girlfriend type of thing. 
But surprisingly, we had a few people say yes, they did. And I hope it was like your grandparents. Like, I think approaching a rando is weird. Like, I feel like every year there's a video of like some young person helping an elderly grandma cross like a six lane road. And like, that's cute, but did she really need the help? You're probably gonna get her sick. You know, she can't afford to get sick right now. She's old. It's pandemic. Do you smile if you make eye contact with a stranger? A little bit of everything on this question. 10% said yes every time. 15% said no, never. Majority said often but not every time. I think it's valid to not smile every time. Because, you know, it, it takes energy to move your cheeks, I guess. But... To think only 10% said every time, like... It's just kind of sad. Is there no more good people in the world? Okay, the final question for the Naughty or Nice Quiz 2023. After answering all the above questions, do you still think that you've been naughty or nice this year? 75% still feel like they've been nice, and 25% feel like they've been naughty. Looking at the initial first question, 80% said they felt nice. So that means... That means one person changed their mind at the very end and took the quiz and thought they were naughty. <laughs> Someone did the old switcheroo. They're like, actually, I need to do some self-love and evaluate my life decisions. <laughs> I was I was genuinely expecting the same percentage, but it's so hilarious that somebody like changed. <laughs> okay, so that was all the naughty or nice quiz questions we had for this year. Thank you everybody for participating. It was a lot of fun. Make sure you do it next year. See if you've been naughty or nice. Thank you. Okay. Now time for the silly and fun questions that I had at the very end. And there will be a surprise at the end of stream. Don't worry. First. Is Santa real? 13 plus chat. Some of us are adults. Some of us are like old enough. To where like you don't take pictures with santa anymore it's kind of like weird at this point if you go to the mall and take pictures with santa if you're 13. the options were yes there's a literal address for santa's workshop no i'm not a baby and santa who megalo <laughs> i just put santa who megalo that's just funny it's like how do you not know who santa is even if you don't celebrate, I think you know who Santa is, right? 40% said, no, I'm not a baby. That was me. I put, no, I don't believe in Santa. And 25% said, yes. <laughs> Santa's real. I think they just said yes in the one rare chance that Santa is real. And they're just scared of not getting presents this year. But that was really funny. <laughs> 25% of you thought Santa's still real. <laughs> Next. Do you leave cookies out for Santa? 80% said no, not anymore. And 20% said yes, I always have and I always will. Will. 20% said yes, I always have and always will. Wait, so that means... 5% of you believe in Santa? But then also don't leave cookies out for him. Even if you're riding on the fact that Santa might be real. If you don't leave cookies out then he won't give you shit. You know that right? Clueless. <laughs> Satan is real. Please more presents. I meant Santa. <laughs> Dude that. <laughs> sure. Surely that was a typo. <laughs> Dude. Uh... Okay, final question. 
Do you consider yourself a Scrooge? 75% said no. A good three quarters. 15% said yes, I really like money. And then 5%, so one person each, said yes, I'm a pessimist. And one person said they're pessimist and they like money. I think for me... I don't like money. Like, money's great, but like, I don't need it. I'm fine being a brokey. But I am a pessimist. Like, I have hope that there is good in the world, but I'm still like really negative all the time. So like, I guess I'm a pessimist. I guess I am a Scrooge. Damn. Okay, guys. That concludes the naughty- that concludes the Naughty or Nice 2023 quiz and a little extra goodies. Thank you to everybody who participated. Thank you to The Roomies, Not Mac, Dino Crystal, Kobobo, Computer, OWO, Royalist, Orbit Toast, Wolves R Us, I'm Sivan. Thank you, Sivan. I know you lurk and watch the YouTube. Thank you. Iced Lemon Vanilla, Totoro for Life, Angie Nemo. Eth Maker, Mother Electra, Electra, two separate usernames. Rickarat, Peace in Simp 97. I wonder who that is. Hi Hacker, King Senwit, and Adamant. Thank you to those who filled out the quiz. Genuinely thank you. Thank you for taking the time out of the day to help make content for holiday. Thank you for keeping the stream alive. Okay. Now. We're going to move on to the little surprise. I also had a few other bonus questions on the quiz. And I asked you guys, what is the best holiday drink? And what is the best holiday cookie? So for holiday drinks, <laughs> the most popular was hot cocoa with nine people saying hot cocoa. Or some iteration, some people said peppermint, some people said like room temp cocoa. Same thing, hot cocoa. Two people said peppermint coffee. Three people said water. Two people said alcohol. Somebody said Santa's milk. Another person said tears. Orchata, ginger ale. And then somebody just put IDK. <laughs> and then for like most popular cookies for the holidays, everybody, we had nine people say sugar, so almost half of the people said sugar. Same number as hot cocoa. Two people said every single cookie. Two people said shortbread. We had somebody say the store brand cookies, the ones that like taste like plastic. One person said no cookies. I think they're a Scrooge. One person said chocolate chip. One Only one person said gingerbread, surprisingly. And then one person said thumbprint. So you guys decided that hot cocoa and sugar cookies were the most popular holiday drinks and cookies. So you know what? I think I'm gonna go ahead and make some little goodies for you guys today. Now, I'm gonna go set up the camera downstairs. So it's gonna be a little minute. Okay? Wait. So let's go make some hot cocoa and some cookies. Was quick okay <laughs> right now i'm live but not really live for the meg esports kitchen everybody today we're going to be making sugar cookies and hot cocoa there's still water in here i didn't wash it yet you guys voted that sugar cookie is the best holiday cookie and then hot cocoa is the best holiday drink so we're going to be making gourmet versions of both today by gourmet i mean a year and a half expired confetti sugar cookies because you know we love sprinkles and then i'm actually gonna make hot cocoa from scratch that is gonna be legit so let's get started so in order to make the expired sugar cookies all you need is the bag three tablespoons room temperature softened butter and one egg okay let's get the butter i've had it warmed up in my sister's pocket for 30 minutes can we get the room temperature butter please 
Oh my god, I caught it. <laughs> First, combine the egg, the butter, and your cookie mix. Mix until soft dough is formed. We're gonna mix. It is you know, such I a dumb personally bit. love a lot of clumps. I did soften my butter. And before anybody asks, yes, the egg shot took three tries. The second try, my sister didn't press record. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, shoot. I didn't <laughs> Okay. This batter is really lumpy. Dude, I was dying. I don't think I'm doing it right. This looks like an elementary school project gone wrong. You know, it's a rainbow, and you already know that's wrong. Hashtag LGBTQIA I am. Okay, wait, this doesn't make a lot of dough. I wanted to make like a million cookies. This only looks like. Voice reveal? Six. No, my sister's know, accidentally really linked her voice combined. before. It's still a bit wet. In the pumpkin like, pie stream on the YouTube highlight, form the ball. she showed her voice too because she fucked oh. up filming then as well. Yeah, gloves. <laughs> not gloves, spoons. She just said that she's fine really with showing her voice because not I'm many scared. people will okay, see I this think clip. My dough is literally way too wet. Should I add flour? Wait, what if I make a cookie tray? That could go kind of crazy. <laughs> Dude, it's so wet. Okay, honestly, looking at the texture of the batter, I think these are all just gonna pool. Like, there's no way these are gonna actually form properly. Do not ever eat raw cookie dough. But it's fine as long as people don't see you. Now bake the cookies at 375 <laughs> for 8 to 10 minutes until nice golden brown. Next, we're gonna start on the hot cocoa. From scratch. This recipe is courtesy of Tasty.com. You're gonna need one and a half cups whole milk, half a cup heavy cream, two tablespoons powdered sugar, eight ounces dark chocolate, and whipped cream for serving. Espresso powder, I'm not gonna use that. I don't like coffee. I'm not from New York. Now that we have all our ingredients ready, we can go ahead and get started. First, in a saucepan over medium heat, whisk together the milk, heavy cream, and powdered sugar until it's hot. Small bubbles will appear around the edges. Got it. <laughs> Dude, it spilled everywhere. It's just a happy little accident. Powdered sugar going in. It's just snow, I promise. Not anything bad. I don't like using the metal on the nonstick, but I, I legit can't find my other whisker. Whisker? Whisk. Any furries? Everything is fully combined now. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the cookies are insane. Editor put a photo here now. Okay, the milk mixture is warming up a little. It's steaming. Still no bubbles. Still no bubbles, but I can smell the milk burning because I spilled it earlier. So I got semi-sweet chocolate chips because I've never been too big a fan of dark chocolate. It's just too bitter. You know, I love that sugar. Cookies are done. Dude, eight ounces is so much. Imagine guzzling down all this chocolate. I don't want to be Augustus Gloop. And no, do not tell me I look like him. I do not. See, that got a chuckle. <laughs> no way those are done. Ain't no way. Small bubbles are forming. Alert. Small bubbles are forming. Time to add the chocolate. It says to turn the heat down to low. Because it cannot boil. We mix in our... It says chopped chocolate, but I got chips for that reason, so I don't got a chocolate. Oh my god. Dude, see that splash? That's so dangerous. That was not on purpose, I swear. Oh, they're already melting. Wow. Yeah, I thought this would take all day. This honestly stinks. The burnt milk does not smell good. If you had smell -o vision actually, you did not want smell -o vision right now. Okay, it says once the chocolate is melted, then this is done. I think this the is The kitchen done. still smells like burnt milk. It's so bad. Okay, hot pot, hot pot. Ta da! You can't even see it. Yeah, I'm gonna let this cool. Honestly, I never liked hot chocolate because I don't like hot drinks. I'd rather have, I, whenever I make hot cocoa, I would do half hot water and half cold. That way I'd have room temp cocoa. That personally is the best I have. Man, this is so pretty. It's so dark. 
I honestly don't know how the cookies will come out, but I don't want them to burn, so I'm going to go ahead and take them out now. Yeah, I think this is as good as these are going to get. I don't know. I, I feel like they're going to burn if I leave them in for longer, so we'll see. See you in 20 minutes. Just kidding, editor. Smash cut now. I know it's standard to put marshmallows on hot cocoa. Like, I'll use it if it's I should have put, you know, those vine booming and then explosion PNG. Hashtag not sponsored. This is more that I bought from Thanksgiving. And yes, it is frozen. I didn't thought out. I'm going to put a big doll because, you know, it's light Cool Whip, so it's fine. Oh my god. Look at this. Insane. Dude, this looks so good. Okay, first sip. Dude. It tastes like melted chocolate. It's so good. This is probably not healthy at all. I don't is this better than like the mix? Like, health-wise? I know it's not healthy, but this? So good. The chocolate? It tastes like you had a chocolate fountain, but, like, without the oil. This is dangerous. And honestly, the texture of the frozen cool is, like, it's touching my upper lip as I drink the hot cocoa. It's a good combo. 10 out of 10. Try making this at home. Honestly, try this at home. This took, like, almost less than five minutes. Nothing will beat this. Now, time for the sugar. Yeah, that was a bad edit. Looking at this now, probably a mistake to make them the big as my hand. But, you know, I thought it was funny, and I own up to my mistakes. They didn't get too burnt. Nice golden brown on the bottom. Soft inside. First bite. It's hard to get down. They taste like nothing. Maybe it's because it was expired. They don't <coughs> taste sweet at all. Zero out of ten. Wait, let's try it in the cocoa. Wait, let's try it in the cocoa. Like a little biscuit? No, it, it doesn't help. Mm-mm. I don't think anything can save these cookies. Zero out of ten. They're not good. Don't eat expired cookie dough, guys. I promise. It won't be good. Thank you guys for coming into my kitchen. And once again, thank you to everybody who participated in the Naughty or Nice quiz for 2023. You helped decide what goodies I made this year. What will we make next year? I don't know. Stay tuned and find out. There we go. That was my sister and I filmed that last night because I wasn't going to make the goodies. I was just going to like just show the results. But I was like, you know, let's make them. So we filmed that last night. <laughs> my sister, because we filmed it at like 7 p.m. And my sister had to go to work. But she at that point had been up for like 12 hours because <laughs> she didn't get her work schedule time. So she was the Lulu the whole time. And wait, I want to replay the bit. Oh, I, I X'd out the tab. Shit. Wait, I found it. He, I want to replay the bit where she fucked up. But it's fine as long as people don't see you. Like, my sister is, like, flawlessly funny sometimes. It's amazing. Until soft dough is formed. We're gonna mix. You know, I personally love a lot of clumps. I did soften my butter. My sister didn't press her... Oh, right here, right here. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> oh, shoot, I didn't even... <laughs> <laughs> like, she and I were cracking up for, like, five minutes straight after that mess up. Because at that point, we, that was the second attempt at the egg bit. 
and she literally sh shot it perfectly, but she just didn't click record. <laughs> and like that, the video we just watched will be on my clips channel. Make sure you're subscribed. I'm probably gonna upload it tomorrow. That way, the you know vod watchers can wait till tomorrow to watch the actual. It's a nine minute video. Um, you can see her pause, like she's laughing, and then. Like her face, she was like, <laughs> it, it was so funny. Um, because like that was the first time like I recorded a cooking video online. Cause the only time I've done cooking on film was for a stream. Um, <clears throat> so it was like really weird to film with no live viewers. It did feel better than my sister because she was like in the living room just watch. She was like staring at me the whole time. Like, you know, the furry joke. Like she actually chuckled at it. No, it wasn't the furry joke. It was the Augustus Gloop joke she laughed at. And like, if you can make my sister laugh, then like, you're good. She She's very hard to crack. But it was a lot of fun. And yeah. You guys enjoy type one. The behind the scenes footage goes crazy. Dude. I had to cut so much out. Because, like, there was... That was, like, the second time my sister didn't press record. I wasn't, like, mad at her. But I was, like... You could tell in my voice. I was, like, please make sure that you're recording this time. Like, there's a red bar at the top that indicates that it's recording. I was, like, please make sure you're recording. <laughs> like, I didn't get mad at her, but I was, like... I was this close. I was, like, if she would have messed up a third time, she would have been in trouble. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. You'll meet her one day. Maybe in, like, never? I don't know. Wait, where's the music? There we go. I don't know, it was really fun filming offline. Because, like, I was aware of YouTube content when I was young. Like, 13-year-old and up. I started watching YouTube when I was, like, 10. But, like, I didn't make an account until I was 13. Because I was so scared of, like... YouTube finding me because you in order to have a YouTube account you have to be 13 Similar to twitch. So like I didn't make an account for years until I turned 13 <laughs> And I didn't because like that means like I was just watching YouTube without an account for like three years <laughs> But yeah, so my sister and I like never made home videos. We never like tried making little YouTubes for ourselves But it was really fun. I Don't know she has some good bits, I have some good bits. She and I came up with the butter throwing bit together because, no, genuinely, like putting butter on your counter doesn't warm it up faster. Like it was not a joke. Like I, she had the, the stick of butter in her pants pocket and it was like melted, <laughs> like completely melted. So you know what? If you need butter, just put it in your pocket. I was, the initial joke was, I've had the butter stick up my ass for the past hour, but I was like, let's not do that bit. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So, I think that concludes stream for today. Short stream. Don't worry. I have to work on some stuff for tomorrow and Sunday stream, because tomorrow, what are we doing tomorrow? Tomorrow we are doing writing Santa's list, exposing exposing viewers' logs. We did this last year, where I look through viewers' chat logs and then we determine if you're naughty or nice. If you want to participate in that stream, you have to watch live tomorrow. It'll be in the morning, okay? Probably 11 normal stream time. Make sure you're watching tomorrow if you want to participate. Otherwise, if if I don't have enough people redeemed, we're gonna do all these subscribers. So if you're a subscriber, you just automatically get roasted tomorrow. And then we hit our sub goal yesterday, so I'm gonna do an evening subscriber-only stream tomorrow as well. Plan for Sunday, Christmas Eve. In the morning, we're gonna do Winter Wishes. If you follow my social media, you know what that is. And then maybe Gingerbread Houses. <clears throat> I don't know if I wanna do Gingerbread Houses this year, honestly. And then in the evening, on Christmas Eve, Santa Watch 2023. That's the plan for tomorrow and Sunday. Make sure you are following my channel if you're new here. And if you're already following, turn notifications on. That way you don't miss a single stream. Do it now. 
We did have one person redeem with their channel points. We're gonna do calligraphy really quick. We're gonna do calligraphy, everybody. You know the drill. <clears throat> if you donate to the channel or use your channel points, I will write your name. So do so now. It works. Ain't no way. Don't show feet. Also, <laughs> in the clip of my sister realizing she's not filming, she accidentally filmed my feet. <laughs> so I had to crop the video. <laughs> Good one. She almost gave you guys a freebie. Thank you for redeeming wolves. I spelled their name wrong. I'll try again. It's royalty is. for redeeming. Why are you choosing brown? That's like, it's such an ugly color. I'll do poop brown. Oh, whoops. I'll be able to give you your gift card next week, probably. Tumbles are so nice. Oh my god, Mario Wonder. Mm -hmm. Okay, last call. If you want me to write your name, all you must do is use your channel points. Last call. wrap it up here for today sorry i hit my camera thank you all for watching any chatters lurkers once again thank you to everybody who participated in the naughty or nice quiz this year thank you to all 20 of you i appreciate your participation helping make content for the stream if we like it i can do semi-regularly more interactive content in the future i know it brings in people but it's just a matter of like having enough people participate to where there's like enough substance to it. Like 20, perfect amount. Like nothing too crazy. Like 20 is a good sample pool size, especially for a channel my size. Last year we had 24, so only a few less than last year, but that's still really good. I hope you enjoyed the cooking bit. That video will be posted on my YouTube Clips channel tomorrow. 
So make sure you're subscribed to that channel, youtube.com slash at peace and seven eclipse. And the main channel for weekly stream highlights. New video will be published on the main channel tomorrow. So make sure you are subscribed. If you want to see what I do offline, or if I have other stream ideas that we need to prep for preemptively, it'll be posted on my social media. So make sure you're following my TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Do it now. Okay. I will see you guys tomorrow with the Santa's List stream. I will be exposing everyone. Get ready. Goodbye. Bye, Royalist. We'll see you next time. Enjoy your winter break. And watch every stream. Smile. Okay. Bye, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.